Hey everybody, I'm Zez, and welcome. I don't know what I'm going to call this. Um, This episode is mostly just going to be a brief overview of actually going into depth about this game. And we'll start in, you know, actual missions next episode. This is just so... I don't want to throw you into this game with absolutely nothing. To start out, first of all, we got our three little Kerbals here. How's it going, guys? I never noticed they had hair before, but they're cute little... Uh, I don't know. What do you call them? They, they, they look like... Wasabi, that's it. They look like little things of wasabi. Wasabi! Um, and behind them is the planet of Kerbin, obviously, analog to Earth. Uh, I don't know what that is. Okay, so now, start game. Gonna come over here to our start game. There is training, uh, which you can do. I've done those long ago. Scenarios. This is interesting. <laughs> These are, uh, three different things where you can use it to uh test out the stuff but what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit start new um um as you can see there's going to be um says youtube there's going to be a career thing obviously it's not available now i was originally planning on not playing this game until the career option came out but you know so here we go we're gonna hit start um i but i wanted to you know have an idea what was going on. All right, so what we got here is we got, as I explained in the other video, our three base, our four basic things. We got the radar dish. We don't have any missions going on, but the tracking station. Sorry, this uh, this would let us look at Kerbin, and I'll actually use this to explain Kerbin. Um, this would let us uh, you know, select other missions. We don't have any flights in progress though, so it's not really important. No idea what that is. Um, so obviously here we have Kerbin. It's uh the basic thing. We actually start. You gotta be able to see it, but we start right about there. That's where we start. And then here is the moon. I have lots of missions stuck on the moon right now. <laughs> For my crap, I I haven't. Uh, we have Minmus, which is a planet. Obviously, you can see its uh orbit is off kilter uh, slightly. So if we zoom out here to the orbital, uh, apparently we can select their moons. Um, here is the solar system. Currently, there's nothing else beyond this. You go over here to Eve, uh, Moho, uh, Duna, and Joel, and then there is the sun, obviously. So uh, now that I'm clicking this, I can just go ahead and target this. Um, this looks like an awesome-looking planet. Hopefully we'll visit there someday. This will probably be the first. It's either this or Duna. It's going to be the first. Obviously, you can see some Mars analog with the giant snow caps. Over here is Ike. Um, I actually haven't taken a look at what Joel looks like. So you can see Jupiter with all the... Oh, it's a gas giant. Okay, that makes sense. Here we can... Oh, wow. Arca wow. Oh, this would be hard to land on and get back. It's Arca uh, Archipelago. Archipelago. Um, Moonlike. It's a moon. That's Moonlike. I don't actually know why I'm doing this. This is something that I can do with... Oh, that's a cool-shaped planet. Hard as hell to land on, though. All right, now let, let, let's go. This is what this is. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and click back on Kerbin. And, yeah, so we're going to... Go, I'm going to go back. As you can see, um, so we got the launch pad. We shouldn't have really have anything. Um, we have the space playing hangar. I'll do all that in a later episode. But as you can see, we have our three things here. Um, we have our command pod. We have the two different command pods. I am just going to select the uh, one-person command pod for this second. Otherwise, bad things will happen. All right, so here we are. We have all the parts. We have our various stages. Um, in the newest update, because they added in two sides of the things, this is the smaller version. That would work with this side of fuel tank. Now, this other side of fuel tank, significantly bigger. That would be for the three-person spacecraft, which is probably what we'll be using more. But for this demonstration, I'll show it to you otherwise. And then, so that's the different fuel tanks. These are half-size fuel tanks, you know put them on the outside. Here are the uh, 
Here are uh, two different rockets we would use with this size of it. Uh, we either have our big engine or our small engine. The difference is, is this one is uh, thrust vectoring, which means this one will actually control the ship along. This one will actually control the ship. And actually, before I get into any of that, I think what I'm going to have to explain is the SAS. The SAS is, I don't actually know what it stands for, um, uh, the Stabley Argument System, Auto Spin, Cygnus Avoidance Solution, or if you call it, it makes the ship stop spinning. Uh, manufacturer found lying by the side of the road. Um, what happens is, though, is that essentially is, that's the autopilot, and that's the point of this being thrust vectoring is gimbal. Um, this will, uh, it'll move along with it to help keep the thing on top. Now, this is the size of uh, the main rocket for the other one. Uh, that's the, these are like the m like weaker engines you would use for a lot of landers on here. Uh, this is a jet engine. That's flight stuff not to worry about. This is like an external mounted uh, engine you could use. I have used these in landers before. Um, this is called the atomic rocket. This is it's very very weak, very very slow, but does not consume anything and is very good for interstellar or inter sorry interplanetary travel. Come over here. We have um, our RCS. Now our RCS is what this is. It's essentially if you've ever seen a video of anything, they're like little jets coming out of the side of the rocket that help to move it in space with no atmosphere. Um, that's what though our Different appropriately sized. These are little rockets. Um, slowly warmed up. Um, what is it? You essentially put them on the outside of rockets to help detach the stages. Uh, these are our, um, these are solid. These are our rocket boosters. This is like the one that are on the outs that's on the outside of the space station. Uh, the uh, space shuttles, or were I guess. Um, this is an SAS module for uh, much. This is an appropriately sized one for the new thing. Um, Alright, now there is a difference between these two. Uh, well, these are a bunch of different things designed for use with the other ships. Uh, this is what we'll use a lot. It's called a winglet. Um, it's essentially something the SAS controls to help steer the ship in atmosphere. There is a difference between these. This one, let's say what I would do is I would come over here. I would, I would, take, a, I would take a decoupler and I would put this right underneath it. Because this will control everything down. This controls it just for that stage. And doesn't really control it for... Um, it doesn't like control like winglets or anything. This is what they would call gimbling. If I am right. It essentially there's just a weight in there that moves around to help keep the ship balanced. I'm going to slowly build up this ship right here. Um, now we'll come back to it. And... Uh, something. These are just you know random parts you would add onto ships. Uh, different uses. This is a large decoupler. Uh, this is something I will get into probably in a later video when we actually start to build stuff. Um, this is essentially if you wanted to put small size parts onto like now I could attach. Now I could attach like this size of fuel tanks onto there, which, you know, has its advantages if you're trying to travel really far distances. Um, there's other things. This is something you want to use. This is just for takeoff. It holds it in place so you're not flipping everywhere. Uh, more parts that we don't need to worry about. There's a nose cap. Uh, nose cap you put on top of things, that sort of stuff. These are important. This essentially stabilizes the pieces of your rocket together. Uh, this is a tricoupler. I can now attach three fuel tanks onto that. Uh, if you come over here, these are the these are some new stuff. These there's nothing else in here right now, but these are essentially what these are wheels for the uh, uh these are for the uh, space planes, but um. Essentially, what they did in the last game is they added in. Uh, in the last couple of updates, they've added in these are uh, landing struts. You attach these to the outside to build landers, and then um, with the additions of EVAs, you could, I could throw this here. This will be inside once it's like inside of a little thing up here, and then your guy can go EVA. 
essentially what that is used for. Um, and I mean, then these are uh, parachutes, very important. Obviously, you can see the large size difference. These are, you detach this here so that when you detach everything but this, it will still have a safe landing. Because, you know, you kind of want your astronauts to live a little bit. So that's pretty much a very brief overview. Um, um, I'm going to show you. Just going to call this one test. Um, I'm just going to go ahead, build a very, very small one. This one. You know, isn't likely to go anywhere. I don't expect it to go anywhere. Um, I'm just going to, you know, throw parts onto the air. Make yourself a base. I'm going to make it multi-stage. I'm just going to, you know, uh, make a fairly basic multi-stage. Now, as you can tell, you're going to want to add these onto here for control. Come down here. Um, I'm not doing anything fancy with the staging either. You can do fancy stuff with staging. To make it so I could have rockets mounted on the outside of here, burn at the same time as down there for extra stability. Could do all sorts of crazy stuff like that, but I'm actually not going to do any of that. I would just like to get to the flight. So I'm actually going to demonstrate the uh, tricoupler here. Um, now you could do here is you can do the symmetry, so I can you know now there'll be three on the outside. Or it automatically sets up for, you know, tricoupler three. Duh. Just. Yeah, uh, let's also small, throw a small one onto there. This is th this is just essentially a demonstration of parts. It attaches up there. We are looking good. Um. And then, where is it? This is also very important. I didn't explain these. I don't. Uh, I don't actually know. I've never, I've never really gotten these to work. Really, I usually use these. These are something I would attach them here. I'm gonna do this. I'm going to attach these here, and then I'm going to come and attach these solid state boosters. And voila! Look at that. Actually, let's go ahead and throw on a few more winglets. Um, this is a very, very basic rocket, a uh, multi very basic multi-stage rocket. Um, I'm not going to go into anything about actually trying to get into orbit or anything, but, you know, whatever. Um, as you can tell, there aren't a lot of advanced techniques used on this, and I'm going to purposely avoid using the strut connectors. Just to, uh, just so you can see how shaky and wobbly this is going to get. So, with that... Let's head out to the launch pad. Um, this is going to stop responding for a second, and it's going to start working again because you're loading a massive world. I mean, I have the graphics turned pretty much all the way down to Tomwell Kerman. I could not give less scraps about killing you. Um, all right, so flight mechanics. Um, they look a little complicated, and I'll go and explain explaining this uh, little ball down here. You know, once that becomes relevant. For now, I'm just going to show you the basics of actual flight. Um, now, as the standard controls, you would hit T to turn on the SAS. Now you can see it turns on the SAS force over here, and these winglets start moving to keep the rocket stabilized. Um, it's shift, it's a uh, left shift and left control to throttle up and down. As you can see, here is our uh, Oh, this is a time warp. I can warp it as fast as I want to while we're on the ground. It's just gonna flip day really fast. Well, there you go. Now this mission has been going on for a really long time. Except it hasn't actually flown yet. Ah! Um, that's just a warp once again. That obviously was prevalent when interstellar travel. Where it's gonna take like four days to get there because we don't want to be sitting there for four days. Duh. Um, we have, uh, this is our height, this is the amount of atmosphere we have left before we actually break the atmosphere. Tom Weld Kerman, um, this is the degrees from the planet. Uh, this is easier to explain once we're actually in space. Um, here is the surface, uh, how fast we're going in surface speed in meters per second. Um, if you hit C, this is a recent addition. You can, uh... It's a little window. You can actually fly the rocket from in here. 
it's completely cap all, all the different things I'm actually completely capable of flying the rocket from in here make sure that's open um no don't go uh then the, the M brings you into this world map I guess you could call the world map so without further ado and then space separates the sage or also in this case it also starts the rocket so our throttle is up, our SAS is on. It would hit R to turn on RCS. I don't have any RCS in this rocket, though. So, um, As you can see, they separated a lot. Uh, look at this, the, the amount of space there is between those different rockets. Um, this is still the... Uh, what do you call them? What do you call... Oh, they're also overheating, but these always have a tendency to want to overheat. They never actually will, though. Luckily, they never actually will. So those detach. Now I gotta hit that and turn on the regular rockets. Those are gonna go ahead and fall back down to Earth as if, you know, they're unimportant. Uh, now, see, if I didn't have these here, this thing would just be spinning like mad and make everything hard as hell to control. Um, Alright, well, what's the technique? At this point, this obviously isn't, a t this obviously isn't us getting into orbit. Um, at some point, because the whole point is obviously you got to get into orbit, you're going to want to hit T and then move the controls a little bit. Oh, well, crap. Um, I broke the world. Um, sorry, Tomwell? Generally, if this happens, it is considered mission failure. Except for the fact that it's now stabilizing after complete three, after just a flip. Oh, and here's another one. Um, there's probably a reason for it. I probably did something wrong. This type of stuff likes to happen, though, and obviously I would spend more time building this rocket if I was actually planning on doing crap with it. But, you know. Alright, I'm just going to turn this off and get us into this last stage. That's right. No fuel. Okay, well, we just attached from that stage, and if I hit this again, uh, the parachute will come out, flipping into another stage. Here's our various... Th that's one of the rocket's parts. Here's another one. Fall! Um, as you can see, this is how far away from it we are. Actually, I think if I click on this... Click! Uh, I used to be. I, I I think if you're higher in orbit, you can do that. Um, obviously this was pretty much a mission failure. Pretty much a mission failure. I mean, this this very few instances where this could have gone worse, but it it worked as a demonstration that sometimes you need to figure out what you're actually doing in this game before you can actually do crap. Um, at about 500, yeah, at about 550 meters. Oh, look at that, something, it's probably winglets rocketed out of, and now they exploded. So here it goes down, um, I am going to actually warp speed, um, the only thing is, is warping it in the atmosphere actually increases the amount of forces by four the ship is exerting. So I'm actually going to do this when it's just above the ground. So, you know, we can come in for a nice soft landing and... Kill Tom Well! Roll! Roll, I tell you. Roll back. Um, And then, obviously, as I showed you last time... Oh. Uh, apparently we have broken this. Uh, let go. Obviously, you know. <laughs> These guys are a little glitched out. Um, F grab. Let go. Work, darn you. As you can tell, this guy apparently thinks he's still on another planet, because he's not the brightest thing. But anyway,
Okay, well. Okay, well, obviously the RCS fuel. Um, and then I could right click on him and see how much fuel he's got left, and I could just, I could just sit here burning all of his fuel. You know, getting nothing done. You know, heating up that little patch of ground. It's not really important though. But okay, you know what? I think I'm gonna end this episode here. Uh, I think I've gotten pretty much everything I wanted to across quite nicely. F is grab. F is also bored, and then I'm just gonna. If you hit end flight, um, you can see this is all the stuff, and this is colliding into the surface, colliding into the surface, separation of the various stages, uh, landing, crashing the thing. Um, somewhere it's going to say. Tom Will Kerman from Test 1 and EVA. Well, we landed at some point in between here. Um, now you can go to the tracking center of the space center. We're just going to go back to the space center. And there you go. Um, obviously, this was probably boring, but stick with it. Trust me, it gets a lot more interesting. You just... This game, you have to give this, give this game a chance. So, I'm glad everyone who did watch and did give this game a chance. Stay tuned. We will do some more fun stuff, like getting into orbit and all that, and actually going out and exploring the universe at a later date. This had just was a quick tutorial. So with that, I'm Zez, this has been Curl Space Program, and this has been the tutorial, and next time we'll do some fun stuff. Bye.